Hey, check this out. Yo, bro, reach. Hey, come listen to this, man. Yo, let's go. They're starting. Hey, welcome to the Cypher. Hey, everybody, it's Ali Aziz. Shiloh. Joseph Lee. And Paul Mathon. And we are the Cypher. Hey, guys, welcome to the Cypher. And today we have our guest, Tracy K. Thank you for being here, JC. Thanks for having me. Um, and today we're going to kick it off by doing the genius segment. Our genius segment is basically when we bring an artist on and have them play their songs fully. And explain their lyrics um, like kind of in depth, what they kind of meant. Exactly. Thank you, Joe, for that explanation. Dude, no problem, <laughs> bro. So if you ever watch those genius videos, they invite artists in, um, and like what Joe said, they explain their lyrics. Exactly. Also on the Genius website, um, you're able to view like the lyrics, and then there's like hyperlinks where you can mm -hmm. view the meetings behind the lyrics, which I spend like 80% of my time on. We are not <laughs> sponsored by Genius, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. One day, one day. <laughs> one day. Are you a genius? Genius, 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 genius. I stay drowning in the traumas of yesterday. Many past mistakes that I made. It's kind of crazy, too many what ifs and maybes. They say the past doesn't last. But it lasts within my memories in the cemetery. Blocks of bodies, bodies from blocks that got bodies. Sometimes for the same ones, I'm the same block like how we jealousy and envy. How could it be? Instead of you having your brother's back, you stabbed him repeatedly. Supposed to be family. What happened to the unity? Can't trust nobody. Especially when that nobody's a somebody. But the whole block could have done better. How are we supposed to choose between our brothers? How are we supposed to choose between one another? I can't explain it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Who called you the creator? You think you y'all taking lines, but you can never create one. I heard y'all locked up behind bars. Went from spitting them to getting in and out of the pen. Only just to get back in. It's crazy. When we were young, we had so much ambition. Ambition mixed with sin. Like, yo, do you ever think about killing our homie? Have you no remorse for turning your back on him? B? That shit could have been so and resolve differently. Sometimes I wish I could go back and change my history, replace my misery with joy. When all I feel is pain, people glorify the streets, but the streets are so insane it turns kids to killers, killers and dealers, dealers and thieves, people robbing their own homies and their family. But death is never ever the way to Jeez. remember okay. that. Yo, bro, like shit, shit on you in a freestyle, bro. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Okay. okay, so. You said the aesthetic, so I guess... It's the overall meaning, the, meaning. the aesthetic, because mm -hmm. everyone's in black. Everyone is yeah. black, too. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I guess explain that. Okay, so um, it was... Well, I made us all wear black because uh, I was talking about somebody who passed away. Um, and basically, the whole purpose of this is the fact that... So, basically, I wrote it because something... I wrote it based off of multiple situations or scenarios. You know what I mean? Growing up... Um, just like, I guess, in community housing or, like, close to community housing, there's a lot of things that happen, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, that we either witness or that we see, mm -hmm. something that we cannot speak upon. But, um, so I just kind of wrote a scenario, or, like, a, I just basically wrote this based off of multiple scenarios, but mainly concentrating on one, which happened around my neighborhood. Um, and basically somebody died, but how he passed away was kind of twisted because the people he got killed by were people that were like his family, like mm -hmm. not just best friends or whatever. Jeez. Like we all grew up together in the same building. So mm -hmm. the same people that we all grew up with, that we all trust or whatever, were the same people that killed him. Nobody mm -hmm. knows the reason, like, you know what I mean? Right. Um, there's speculations as to what, but then it comes to like, was it ever justified? Like, couldn't we have solved it a different way? That's like, you true. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then like, at the same time, we don't know, but, mm -hmm. um, that kind of, like, changed the whole dynamic of, like, you know, my neighborhood or whatever. So mm -hmm. I never spoke about it. This happened a couple of years ago, and then I just, I was like, yo, I got to write about it because this is something that happens often, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And yeah. even with the same situation that it's crazy because when you look into it, um, the same people who did it because he was missing at first and um, not knowing that, like, they dumped his body somewhere, but... Um, Basically, the same people who did it were the same people who were looking for him and looking for yeah, his body. Twisted. And it was really twisted. And, like, you just see the effects of it on, like, everybody. Like, their close friends, their family now. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, every decision that we make affects us. And not just yeah. affects us, but, like, the people we're surrounded by. Like, if that situation didn't go down the way it did, like, 
our lives would keep, or like everybody whose lives were affected by it could have been way different than it is right now. So it's just kind of sad. So mm-hmm. this well, was my just... condolences. I'm sending them towards yeah. you and I guess the entire community. Um, yeah. Yeah. This stuff does happen in so many communities all of the time, mm-hmm. um, like violence in Toronto. And it's kind of like, yeah, nobody's really talking about it. Um, yeah. And I think even, I think more recently people are talking about like the violence that's going on in Toronto because mm-hmm. it's been so much, yeah. Um, yeah. especially in the summer. Yeah. Um, so it's good that you're shedding light towards that. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, definitely. Um, just hearing it like line by line, like every single line has like meaning, some co- meaning to it. Yeah. And like I was telling you like just before mm-hmm. we started, I just kept listening it to it like over and over again. Because every line actually has a meaning, and every time I hear it, it just gives me goosebumps. Um, Crazy. Yeah, exactly. Wait, so how recent was this, like, uh, like recorded? Like, Oh, this was recorded, like, last year. Mm-hmm. Oh, last year. Okay. Yeah, but the situation happened, I don't know, like, five, six years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I feel like with choices and events like these, people, it happens so often that people end up becoming blind to it. You know? mm-hmm. Exactly, and, like... Often, like you were saying, like, in Toronto, like, people are not really speaking about mm-hmm. it. And the only time we speak about violence is when it's glorified. Like, you know yep. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just, like, there are other ways. Like, I remember, I forgot who said it. I don't know if it was Jay-Z, but somebody was basically talking about how, like, people are beefing, like, with different mm-hmm. neighborhoods or over yeah. sets. But yeah. it's just, like, we don't even own the neighborhoods. Yeah. You don't own one piece of right. property. Exactly. So what yes. are we really fighting right. over? You know what and I mean? And Jay-Z's all about, like, you know, ownership, mm-hmm. um, like, money smarts. Yeah. You know the uh, song, The Story of O.J.? No, I haven't no, listened to it. Oh my goodness, it. I mentioned this last episode. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it's just such an amazing song. You guys gotta listen to it. I'm gonna listen to it. Um, but like, especially like in the black community, yeah. you know, um, money smarts, but all of this violence mm-hmm. over like stupidness. Yeah, yeah I, I think there's definitely like a kind of almost a trap that we set ourselves in. At, at the same time as what people put ourselves in a box, I feel like we need to, as a community and as a society, we have to take ourselves out of that kind of concept of money is the the um end all be all basically mm-hmm. especially like fast money because i think that's where it's at and then even then like because i was talking about towards the end of the song like they got released because all of this happened while everyone was like underage you know what i mean yeah. so um some of uh, like their their sentences weren't as long as it could have been or whatever but then after you come out that situation, even if there is a possibility for you to redeem your life, you've been locked up for X amount of years, you come out, no one's hiring you. Mm -hmm. So then you go back to the same kind of situation and you end up being in this cycle. And like fast forward, I'm pretty sure a lot of them went back into the bin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a trap. Like even then your family's gonna be affected by it. And if you have kids, they're gonna try and like like look up to you as well exactly and yeah it's just it's like a cycle it kind of becomes hard to break out of it yeah yeah i don't know if you guys heard of this guy named nathan Baya. Um, oh what oh you know <laughs> like, like jane Street, jane, Street jane Street speaks, speaks. Yeah, yeah. yeah i'm in that whole circle like that yeah oh, okay yeah, dope yeah. Mm-hmm. i haven't been to a jane Street speaks since like either. last year yeah. but mm-hmm. um he has this song i forgot what it is but it's like he's like they call it the, the brothers like call it the trap but they mm-hmm. stay trapped in the system oh. so he's like yeah. you know what i mean yeah. okay, it's okay. this it's curated that way though yeah like certain neighborhoods exactly it's specifically curated so that way there's no way of escaping. That's exactly. why certain neighborhoods are continue to be the way they are. So I don't exactly. blame, I don't blame the people in the neighborhood at all. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really the system that does it. So mm-hmm. there's two sides to every coin. I think there's influence in both sides that, yeah. that um, equate to that result that we see. Exactly, because it's like. Where where are we getting the guns from? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Where are these yeah. people who don't even... Some of them don't even have passports, never left mm-hmm. like their city or their neighborhood because it's that dangerous for them specifically. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So where are they getting the guns from? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's Imports. illegally shipping them here? Where exactly. are they getting the drugs to sell? Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's, it's con- curated that way. Exactly. And even... Um, I was watching a documentary on the south side of Chicago mm-hmm. and like, you know, they have the liquor store, yeah. the gun shop. Exactly. They have the prison right across the street. Mm-hmm. The school system is shit. So it's just like... 
it's literally made that way, and I don't think people realize that. Exactly. Um, and and how- then cheaper foods, cheaper foods are always like the stuff that we shouldn't be eating. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. A lot of these people in community housing and just different neighborhoods where our families are not making as much income, mm-hmm. the foods that are more affordable are the foods that are bad for us. We know mm-hmm. that food affects our mental health. Exactly. Yeah. So it's you know, all what I mean? yes. Everything yeah. like circulates, and then too, like we should be able to make like conscious decisions as well. But it's just like a community effort. That's why it's like a community raises a child. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so now let's go around uh, the round table and ask Tracy a few questions about her career. So uh, my question, or my if, number one question is, do you have, like, a, a musical background? And if so, like, were you influenced to start, like, your musical career with the help of them? Or, like, did you kind of, like, find your own path and, you know, start... All right, cool. So um, I would say, yes, I have a musical background. So I sing and I rap. I also do poetry and, like, mm-hmm. write. So I, um, when I was, like, really, really young, like, you know, elementary school or, like, seven or whatever, um, my parents forced me to join the choir. I didn't really want to. <laughs> church life. <laughs> but, church life, though. Yeah, church life, seriously. Because all my friends would have birthdays on the weekends, and I couldn't go because I had to go to choir practice. Mm. <laughs> but um, I guess... I don't know if I really, like, I always enjoyed singing, but, like, I would always hide in the background because I'm, like, super shy. Mm -hmm. So then um, after that, like, I still had to join the choir or whatever, but, like, as we got a bit older, I guess I I found out that I had a voice or I liked writing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So then I would join the choir, go sing, and then after I would go home and, like, I don't know, write, like, little, I don't know, kid poems or, like, songs, (laughs) like, just stuff. Mm -hmm. It was funny. And um, now, and then since then, oh, I also went to like the York University. I go to York, so I went to the. I joined the York University Gospel Choir oh, cool, cool. and stuff like that. So like, and then I would like people would always ask me to sing or like sing on their tracks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So my parents never supported it because I come from an African background, uh, and same, um, same, same, same. they don't understand like you know music and stuff like that. So a lot of times I would like sneak to go like to do these performances. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Still sometimes too. Yeah, nice dedication though. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so th- it's not encouraged in that way. So sometimes it's like I put like music on a pause, and I was just like I was doing it for fun. Mm-hmm. But then after more so recently, more so last year, I was like, nah, I'm like doing this for serious now. Like yeah. I'm actually yeah. gonna take it seriously or whatever. So um, at home, it wasn't really encouraged unless it was for fun. Mm-hmm. Still isn't. And but like everybody outside would support me. So you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like different mm-hmm. programs I would like join or whatever. Like I joined a program. So, Around Jane Finch, sorry. Yeah, what, no, sorry, sorry but the, what's um, the name of the wait? What's the name of the program? Um, Rhyme and Reason. Okay. Um, it was a beat making program mm-hmm. at like Peach. It's like a nonprofit organization, That's and then dope. I would join like another mastering and mixing. So I would do small stuff like that, or like urban arts. I used to go there. Oh yeah, urban arts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like My I would childhood. like go to urban arts sometimes, mm-hmm. and then just try to like you know basically I got support from the community, but not from home. So mm-hmm. it was it's still kind of like not as much as before but like before it used to be like a battle because i'm i can't go consistently so mm-hmm. i'm like you know what this is just for fun mm-hmm. so for do sure. you think your musical talents because clearly you have talent do you think your talent kind of rose and was manifested by like your family because like at the same time they kind of like forced you to join the choir right oh yeah but exactly they forced me to but at the same time because like when i was young i remember like i used to have like this or like my cousin used to have this game boy um like little toy thing uh-huh. and um, he used to like play Pokemon on it so I would hear just like I don't know or even if it was like I don't know you're playing games on like Playstation or whatever there's always like that music intro yeah. I was yeah. always still kind of like writing over that <laughs> you know what I mean just for fun yeah. and then my, okay, I would force okay. my like little cousins with uh, like we'd all learn the song and sing it <laughs> so that's, that's cool. I don't know honestly cool. I don't know maybe honestly I think it's a bit of both so yeah probably yeah. cause they forced me in the beginning too but I still feel like I would have found my voice. Blessing in disguise, then, maybe. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, um, so what's your favorite genre of music and, like, kind of what you enjoy listening to? I don't have a favorite. So I grew up over here, but I also went back and forth a lot to Wisconsin, like, in Milwaukee with my oh, uncle. Yeah. So... A lot of love. A lot of love. I love a lot. Wow. Okay, sorry. I love a lot of, like, you know, Southern music and, like, Mm. trap music and stuff like that. Like, that's always been like my heart and ratchet music <laughs> sorry but um but at the same time um i really love because i also from an african background so i love like african music you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah. and it doesn't matter where from the continent like just the drums or like you know mm-hmm. what i mean i don't know it just moves you like on a spiritual mm-hmm. level like yeah. i don't know you just feel, feel it the 
them. Is there yes, like, yeah. like it's just, I don't know, the frequency is just lit. Uh-huh. And then <laughs> it just transpired into like a lot of things because then you notice that, okay, like not only Africans use drum or like you find out the history of like colonialism. So like Africans are basically part of like everyone's culture. Yep. You know what I mean? And then you hear like some of the older songs and you hear the drums. Like uh-huh. even if, when I'm listening to South American music or sometimes like Indian music too, they use a lot of nice drums and like, you know, Guyanese music, Trini, whatever, it doesn't matter. I like all those type of music because I feel like, you know, I don't know, they just yeah. kind of sound similar. So, uh-huh. oh, I love Soka. Soka. Oh, I, soka. <laughs> right. I can't, like, sing Soka, but, like, I love Soka. Mm-hmm. Um, R&B, and, yeah. True, true. Cool. R&B's lit, yeah. Um, last one for me. Uh, where do you see yourself in five to ten years from now? And, like, do you care, Do you plan to carry out this, like, musical path? Mm-hmm. Or? I definitely um, plan to carry it out in five to ten years. I don't know where I'll be living because I'm just kind of, like, following opportunity. Mm-hmm. Some opportunities are... Le- um, lead me to like leaving the country sometimes and to go sing or like partner with other people so it's just following that to see where it leads me but just getting paid more for it yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, i mean I get and that money yeah exactly <laughs> but also i want to start a couple of businesses and then want to be able to give back into my community for nonprofit organizations and That's things great. like that on mm-hmm. the side right now yeah. i kind of just do it alone like i work with the kids in my neighborhood and like just spend time with them like i'm like okay we're doing things that we don't normally do like go hiking you okay. know what i mean mm-hmm. and like I'm just like, well, I'll go, like, I don't know, I'll just take them somewhere and just kind of buy them food mm-hmm. and just kind of have a, com- like, you know? Yeah, have- that's, that's, sure, that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. really yeah. important that you're doing that. That's good. Kind, of, yeah. kind of build that community that you need. Exactly. Yeah. So. You always have to, as soon as you, you're doing well for yourself, I believe in, like, Give coming back. back to your community. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. yeah. that's, that's essentially what raised you, so, like, you should. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the main goals for, as an artist and just the artist in general is to make a path make money off of your passion basically mm-hmm. make mm-hmm. a living off of your exactly. or what you monetize your to, interests yeah, yeah. that's monetize. what I'm trying to do exactly. listen um, I got my first royalty check it was not a lot yeah. it was like five dollars uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 listen I was, I was so excited because like I signed up for SoCan and then they like sent it to me and I was mm-hmm. like oh my gosh this is so good so I'm like yeah, it reinforced up. me exactly to like mm-hmm. okay write more to figure out how to write more for other people go to more conferences like build mm-hmm. my skill set mm-hmm. and yeah I mean I guess Joe kind of touched on the genres of music that you enjoy listening to but I kind of want to understand um, the genres of music that inspire your sound because mm-hmm. I assume you have a certain sound Yeah. Um, so yeah okay so I feel like my sound is very diverse like mm-hmm. I can make something like this mm-hmm. and then I can go to like really soft like soulful neo soul R&B okay. mm-hmm. so I would say like and then also like afro R&B so not afro beats like as a total because um like, I was born here, so I have different ethnic yeah, influences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, I would say my main are, like, R&B, hip-hop, soul, neo-soul. Oh, neo-soul. So, it's, like, yeah. it's pretty broad, like, which is actually really good for... Yeah. Especially That's for really artists. Good. I, it's good and then bad at the same time because I'm, like, I want to release a project because I haven't released a project yet. And it's just, like, I don't... Like, I want to be able to incorporate all of my styles into one. So, mm-hmm. it's just, like... But then you have other people trying to tell you, oh, okay, but you should pick one genre. Yeah. But- I think it's actually somewhat good though too because like if you see some of these like toronto artists like they all like just like all you said they all sound the same like they all have that kind of like groove and it just all it always sounds the same but like if no, you have it. different like styles and like 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 styles bro like you can like sound really diverse and, <laughs> no like, but I'm, I'm talking about like if you look at musicians they usually go like with one path first like what kind of sound they have and they build an audience because if you're doing one of everything you sort of just become like spread out and you don't gain a bigger audience like right. you could it depends you know what i mean it depends, so it, yeah, it, it depends. really depends um what you're saying makes a lot of sense though because you do build you know you gain a following usually in one or two genres yeah um but then it also depends like there's bands where they're like neo soul r&b with like latin undertones mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. like i think nowadays there's no such thing as like one singular genre because things yeah. are constantly being blended together that's true yeah. um so like even neo soul like mm-hmm. that's kind of like a new genre in itself not just soul yeah. but it's like this like new trap school. soul yeah so yeah. like i can kind of see where you're coming from <laughs> yeah um even when i'm like listening to music like i, I don't want to listen to just straight i mean i listen to like, like old school straight hip-hop mm-hmm. but like things where everything's blended sounds amazing too so yeah. i guess there's like a great like a great line between yeah. Those. yeah and you also see something like that in jake too where he has like Drake. In, his, in the last like album it's yeah, all, sicko all mode. hip-hop <laughs> and one side was hip-hop and one side was r&b you can't see how um an artist is also diverse because mm-hmm. when an artist is only on one kind of genre it's boring yeah, people only see that artist doing that one thing. Like, like listen to Tyga. Out. Like Tyga sounds the same, you know. Yeah. No, but you see a lot of artists like changing up their styles nowadays with yeah. Eminem and J Cole, Logic. Mm. Like they're 
using more trap beats mm-hmm. like on their mm-hmm. like previous I mean, albums. Too, so. Also, like adapting to what the music scene is. Exactly yeah. the trends because exactly. right now For it's sure. trap. Yeah. So yeah. they also need to sell music. I also want to know what your top three like favorite artists, bands, or musicians are. Okay. Um, or top five if that's hard to choose. Just top three. Yeah. Um, Honestly, um, a lot of them are, like, old school because I don't really listen to a lot of um, modern music. Or, mm-hmm. like, I do, but I don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, so, the first one is Lauren Hill. Like, uh, she yeah. is okay. everything. <laughs> uh-huh. And, like, I haven't listened to all her songs in the entire, like, everything she's written or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, like, um, I remember when I was younger, I used to listen to, like, I don't know, most of her popular songs. But mm-hmm. then, as of recently, like, have you ever heard of Peace of Mind? I th- yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's like yeah. really slow, yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but like it's kind of like what I do, like storytelling, okay. singing. You know what I mean? Or like just talking to okay. yourself. Like I gotta have peace of mind. Like she's talking to herself, but like she's talking to the Most High, and like she's mm-hmm. just doing like I don't know. Yeah. She's just like talking, but like mm-hmm. it's just soothing. And I'm just like, she influences me heavily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, I would say um, this guy doesn't really much. Um, he doesn't like he influences me, but not in the same way that she does because okay. he's more recent. Okay. His name is Jay Givens. He's from the states. Um, he's like this conscious rapper. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, whenever you listen to his songs, because he's, like, so good, Mm -hmm. the first time you listen to it, like, you'll think, you'll get the overall story. Wow, my bad. (laughs) You'll get the overall story. But then after the 10th time you listen to it, like, he's speaking in code, and you're Mm -hmm. deciphering the code, and you're like, oh, my gosh, he actually said this, and you're like, wow, he's amazing. That's crazy. That's Mm -hmm. tough. So I'm like... That's, like, the best. When you listen to something, you're like, wait, they're basically laying out the whole, you know? Exactly. It's, like, a blueprint, and all the people with the code, like, you have to listen (laughs) to it. So I'm like, actually, that inspired me to, like, kind of, like, like maybe like work on a project that's like coded but not mm-hmm. like in the same way but like kind of mm-hmm. like enhance it because okay. I don't know if he did that intentionally like he's just really good at like you know with words or whatever mm-hmm. but like he's one of my favorite artists and then Alicia Keys like um, okay. oh, Alicia I, Keys. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah like she played the instrument you know what I mean like she just yeah. she's lit like you know what I mean she plays the instrument she sings um, I listened to her a lot when I was growing up so I feel like she probably influenced me as well mm-hmm. So She's yeah. Solid. yeah. Oh, and Tupac. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Tupac, <laughs> Tupac <laughs> is. I don't care. Like he's kind of problematic sometimes, but um, I love Tupac. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you know, especially his conscious stuff or like I don't know. Um, from the cradle to the grave. Have you guys ever heard that song? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know. Like some of his stuff are like really deep. Like Brenda's got a baby. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mm-hmm. love tracks like that. Mm-hmm. Um, have you collaborated with any other Toronto artists, mm-hmm. or do you have any collaborations coming up that we should know about? Yeah, yeah, so um, I actually collabed with... Okay, how would you guys define a collab? Because this is, like, <laughs> part of my journey. I'm like, I'm not going to do any more collabs, but it's mm-hmm. a certain type of collab. Okay. So there's, for me, there's, like, two kind of collabs that I've, I've like, been introduced to. There's collabs where people were like, okay, I like your voice. I want you to sing on my song. Mm-hmm. And if you want to make any changes, make the necessary changes. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. there's collabs where it's like, this is your verse. We can come up with a chorus together. Uh-huh. Um, the second one I see, a bit more. Second I one? see both as a collab, to be honest. Yeah. First one, too? Yeah. yeah okay. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, 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 guess, like... I guess the first one is more like uh, the use of samples and stuff. Like or like how, they how... just want my voice. Yeah. They just want your voice. Yeah. Um, because my voice would, and I get it. Because some people's you... voice sound really good with a certain song. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what? Do you, I guess what do you consider a collaboration? Maybe. So okay. <laughs> so I think more of the latter. Like I do understand that the first one's a collab, mm-hmm. but I'm like I'm tired of doing the first right. ones. Like I don't mm-hmm. want, especially because sometimes, like no shade to my friends, I love you guys all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's uh-huh. called? But sometimes it's just like. Okay, I need your voice. And even though the song is nice, it's just not my type of song. Gotcha. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. And then I used to feel bad because I was like, oh, I'm so nice and I feel mm-hmm. bad like to say no. Mm-hmm. So then I would say yes, but then I'm like, damn, like... If somebody Googles me, it's I'm not going to, like, I don't really want to be a part of it. Like, yeah. I, I yeah. want to listen to it, but I just don't think my yeah. voice even sounds really good with it. I think mm. you can find a different singer because her tonality mm-hmm. might be more better or whatever, but they never understood that. Mm. So I see the latter as more of a collaboration because it's like I get to bring a piece of me that's, like, beyond just my voice. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? And I For get sure. to bring my, like, actual whatever. Collaboration using the um, second definition, uh, Lord Badu. His name is Lord Badu. Okay. Um, and then also a guy named Rod Purpose, but mm-hmm. uh, he stopped making music. We actually made some other songs, but he hasn't released it in like two years, so mm-hmm. I don't know if he's releasing it. Mm-hmm. But then after other people like Nathan, Baya, mm-hmm. um, Terrence Penny, who else? I feel like there's other people. Joshua Hoedo. Okay. Like, the, but those are the ones where it's just like, hey Tracy, can you sing on my song? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Now moving on to our last segment, we have the cipher. We'll just let you get the flow of what the beat is. Okay. Um. Sh- shout out to MJM Studios for letting us use this beat. Woo woo. <laughs>
I'll start when the beat drops. Um, I haven't sang all day. I should have <clears throat> to warm up my voice. Warm, you can Wait, warm up now, honestly. All right, y'all, let's start. Don't you leave, yeah, yeah. stay with me, stay with me, stay, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to freestyle, so I don't know. Your voice is amazing, good, like, good. Good. Uh, I feel crazy. trying. <laughs> So I'm going to be doing a verse or a half a verse from STD because I wanted to show you guys. Cool. Oh, STD cool, cool. stands for Spiritually Transmitted Demons. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> Yeah. Yo, the other day I tried to kill myself. Wanted to personally ask God for his help instead. I was met with demons, insert semen. Nephilim came, the earth defeated many a Paul. When the flood saved us all from the aliens, but it did not save us from our sins. I was sin the hour when we realized our demise. Will not profit our soul is when we've lost total control. Hijack shelf somewhere in the subconscious of conscious of demons, aliens who laid their semen in humanity, but never humanly granted the authority. Look for hosts like you and me to possess instead of heaven's gate. You opened up the devil's door, allowed your soul to succumb to the one who attempted to. To eradicate the sun, but never one, never one, two, three, four. He rallied up the demons, got more. And when the gate is left unlocked, while sin is crouching at your door, sins allow the demons to come in. Transformation then begins in a lifestyle, walking for miles with heat and speeding through the traffic of your mind. Demons be like, Do you mind if we occupy your body? We see your failed attempt at astral projection. Curiosity without guidance, instead of protecting your soul, left you body. Listen, the wrong dimension. Yo, did I mention that the only reason why these demons are polite is when they are trying to abuse you, use you. Use you for your physicality so that they can proceed to deceive the human race entirely by entering your body while your soul is left roaming. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Thank you. That was crazy. Oh, the flow switch ups. Oh man. Damn, that flow is crazy, okay. bro. Is this available somewhere? Or? No, I have to record it. Yeah, but because oh, I'm not yeah, working with a team. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so you guys, so basically, people that are listening to this, if they listen to this, um, a sneak peek. You got a preview of like <laughs> unreleased. Yeah, yeah, great, that, was, that, was, that was great. That was great. That was great. That was. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast, this episode with Tracy K. And thank you again, Tracy K, for Tracy, coming thanks in. For coming. Thank thanks for having thanks me, guys. Thanks for coming. You were amazing. Thanks. And we will see you on the next episode with our next guest. Mm -hmm. See ya. Peace. Later. <laughs>